as the city agent of record. I'm sorry, it's Century 21 Best Realty, and it's uh, signed by Ann Parker and Lynn Kinsey. Okay, thank you. It looks like some members are seeing this for the first time now, so let's give them a few moments to look this over. Was this, was this in our packet? We just got it no. now, right? Oh, okay. We just got it. Yes, all right. I got it. All right. Oh, we got it Friday, but after the package went out. Yeah, after the, okay. I think maybe I missed something, but I didn't. Let's try and keep comments to three minutes. 
Um, and I'm actually going to enforce that this time. We're going to we need to get tighter on that. So three minutes, especially since this is a late agenda. Uh, all right. Now, and uh, did you want to speak? No. So, all right. Come on down. So I state my address. Mom, you should for the record, yeah. All right. Even if it won't be taken, sure. <laughs> Andrew Kamala, uh, 620 West Central. Um, so I just came to say that this is my next week, will be my last week here. Um, and that I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, being so supportive and um, making this a great year. So thank you. Thank you. And um, you made some wonderful inroads in the River Walk and, and other places, and uh, your work was just outstanding. Thank you very much. All right, Giannotti. to see the workshop. I think your friend would have been very interested in what is going on there. Well, what, how does well, your friend feel about it? Well, she, when, we, when we walked up, she said, are you going to get have me go in there by myself? Because she thought it looked derelict. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just, and it does. I'm, I, I agree. So that's my. No, in fairness to the Lead Chief of the Public Works Director. Chief, aren't those there for training purposes at the present time before they are uh, made into surplus? That's correct. They're there for training purposes for uh, the canine units. They come and train here in Coke Hill. And then uh, they're also there, they're going to be on display there for when they're surplus. Uh, people can go there, view the vehicles, and then put a bid in for them. That's the plan. So there is a purpose for all this. That's correct. All right, and Kevin, you know, I've mowed, I've mowed plenty of lawns around here, and, and all of us have mowed our own lawns, and uh, 
I mean, these weeds can spring pretty fast, can't they? I mean, our guys are on top of it out there, and sometimes they get a little bit ahead of us, but I mean, our guys are regularly mowing out there, right? Yes, they yeah. are. Yes. Of course. We, Perfect. There we go. Yeah. But, you know, we constantly seem to be adding to Mike's workload. I mean, it, it just, you know, now he goes out and they mow the Riverwalk area, and now they have Jefferson School, and, you know, the dog park they mow now. So, Mike can only mow so fast, especially when I'm asking him right now to, you know, take the lead on putting the fish station together. We've got a lot of things going on, and I've only got so many people, and there's only so many hours in the day. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, as it is, we got a we got a temporary summer help that we've had for I think three years now, which has worked out well and helped with the mowing. But and it's not just ours. I mean, these things grow to where you've got some right of ways. They'll call us up. They'll say, Hey, you know. This right of way where nobody lives, it's scratching up everybody's car, so we have to take the mower and with the with the big side mower on it and you know run it down the road. So there's a lot to do. For no, no doubt, no doubt. Guy. And our guys work hard. Yeah. Is is Mike the only one who can um, work the mower? No, um, all the guys can work the mower, but you know they have other responsibilities and duties too. I mean it's. Uh, Basically, you know, three-man crew and then one man on parks with a temp guy during the summer. We keep them as long as we can because, you know, it's in the shoulder seasons almost when we get more grass growing than anything. Get some rain, get some sun, get some rain, get some sun. And, well, you know what happens. You get yards. Thank you very much. I just wanted to make it clear that, uh, you know. But it's still a mess, huh? What is? <laughs> Jeff. It probably needs weeding more than anything else. All right, well, thank you, Chief, and thank you, Kevin. Um, and I know um, Fran wanted to add some items uh, for the good of the order here before we adjourn the regular council meeting. Are we going to discuss this? Yes. Yeah. 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 You said you wanted to bring something up, but not the Lee Morgan. I thought you wanted to talk about the um, the, the Myrtle Point Mar article. Ben already answered the question. All right, okay. And I know Fran wanted to remind everybody, though, those League of Oregon City position uh, um, surveys we all got, they're due on the 22nd. We turned in, get them in the bin so we can get them into the league. So, all right then. If there's nothing else for the good of the order, uh, we'll talk more about mowing lawns, apparently, uh, in the Urban Renewal Committee. And so I'll adjourn the City Council meeting at 614 and hand the gavel over to the Urban uh, Committee uh, Chairman Weiss. We'll call the Urban Renewal Meeting. Uh, it's a workshop. Sorry. Workshop, I mean, yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're going to lead the lead the charge? Yeah, so I hope there wasn't a misunderstanding. This is a council work session. Yeah, I don't know. I never know anything about no, it. It's a council work session. That was a, my mistake. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I uh, return the go. open renewal meeting, turn it back over to the... That is my mistake. The, uh, Sometimes on it, mayor. Probably more than on. Or more than on. Okay, so uh, I wanted to uh, take some time to discuss a few things. Uh, I handed out this evening uh, a memo and an evaluation that, uh, of the community center's operations. And this is to discuss the, the community center scheduling coordinator position. Uh, as the, as the memo describes, it kind of gives a history. At one time it was a full-time position, then it became a volunteer position, which Fran took part was admirably and generously uh, performed for many years. And uh, for the past eight months, uh, Anne Dukumois has been developing the position from a, uh, as an AmeriCorps volunteer and rare participant. And she has, uh, you know, in her final days here, she's going to be drafting a, a user's manual on how to do this job kind of instruction booklet and uh, which is great because it's going to make the next person's job that much easier to get in and up to speed but right now uh, it's a we budgeted a part-time position of 15 hours per week uh, that's currently funded in the city budget uh, and as we look at 
how the community building is being used, uh, it makes me wonder, is this adequate to meet the strategic needs of the community center on a short-term, medium-term, or long-term basis, and is this sustainable? Uh, while it can get us by for a long time, I am concerned that the facility doesn't generate sufficient revenues to make the needed repairs and improvements to enhance its attractiveness and utility in the field long term. Uh, now, the, I, I, um, about a month ago, I got a resume that came across my desk through the SCBC's Trailing Spouse Program. There's a couple that are moving here, um, and the spouse was interested in finding work, and this uh, woman is Marguerite Worthen. She's the one that performed this evaluation of the community center and gave her perspective on its strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. And she is a 20-year veteran events planner and marketing professional. She's done it uh, as, a, as her own business. She's done it in large corporations. And I was very excited about the prospect of her skill set uh, being brought to help the community center. So I uh, reached out to her and she expressed an interest. We met and um, you know, with hat in my hand, I expressed that there was an opportunity for a 15 hour time job. And but it, you, an opportunity for her to apply like everyone yes. else, is that right? Correct. Correct. But this hasn't been, nothing, nothing's been formalized right. at this point. Yeah. The job hasn't been advertised. <laughs> but we discussed this opportunity, and she did indicate a willingness to do it on a part-time basis. Uh, however, she was also looking at maybe doing it on contract or starting her own business again and trying to serve in the area on a greater scope. But she did see an opportunity in the community center to really build upon its assets on a, on a full-time basis. And she indicated that she'd be interested in doing that on a full-time basis. Uh, and her salary uh, aspirations were 45000 to 50000 And as I looked at uh, what she could do, it did was a very intriguing possibility. So, uh, what did we pay Anne? I know she got money from. Um, well, Anne's compensation, we paid fifty percent, right? And Americorps paid the other fifty percent. The total was about forty-three thousand. Um, so we paid half of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so the opportunity here is to have a, someone with a professional experience and skill set to uh, recommend improvements to the facility, to make improvements and continue the work that Anne has done. And so that's kind of the alternative option one where we could consider increasing the funding to support such a position that would work toward the building capacity and long-term sustainability of the community center. The considerations there are how will the position be funded and how long will that position be sustainable. Uh, the hope would be that with increased programming, activity, rentals of the community center uh, would be more than enough to offset the cost of the position and uh, build a capital fund and make improvements to the building uh, above and beyond what the building currently has uh, to budget with. And so I wanted to bring that up for discussion and see what the council's thoughts are about the community center and what its future operations should look like. No, we, just, we just received this tonight, right? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I, was, I like to have things ahead of time, and I know you probably couldn't get them to us. I typed I like it up this afternoon. So I, yeah. think about, you know, before, so I, I don't think that's an unusual request either. <laughs> but no, I, think but I, mean, I, I think you're reasonable yeah. on that. Can we afford a full time position? Uh, the method of funding I would propose doing is taking it from our property management allocation uh, from the timber sale and directing it to that. 
for one or two years as a pilot project to see if that position can indeed produce the results we're hoping for. And at the end of it, we could reevaluate each budget process, and if we need to say, you know, divide the position and reduce it back down to part time, then we would do that accordingly. Do we have a job description that's written out? We have a very old one. There isn't anything that's been done. And that old one won't work. No. We don't have any of our position because it was a volunteer position for 10 years or more, and uh, the rare position was defined to also include planning and other assignments. And duties. I would be more inclined to start off on a part time basis to see what effect it's going to have and then look at going full time as opposed to going full-time and backing up? My concern is that putting too little investment into it, you're not going to get the results you need out of 15 hours of effort. Well, we could go 20, you know, and see what it's going to do. You could find, you could find a full-time equivalent position, and then, and then only, in like say a 32-hour position, you could do a full-time equivalent position, and then start off as part-time. You see where I'm going? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then you, you know you have that money in there for a full-time equivalent position in case you need to go up, in case you need to increase the hours. I mean, wait, isn't she willing to go part-time? Isn't that what, what the deal was? And whose idea was to go full-time? Uh, she brought it up. Oh, okay. It's full-time. Yeah. I, I see the But we can't talk about her. No, we can't. We've got, we're, let's just say the position. Let's just say the position. That with the, the right person in the position, you know, I'm looking at the, the, the value you can get out of 40 hours a week worth of effort to do marketing, advertising, management of the facility. Uh, you know, there's a great deal of work beyond just the scheduling and answering phone calls and emails and walk-ins that could be done. Uh, 15 hours a week, I feel, I'm concerned, would be eaten up completely in the administrative side of just doing the bookings and reservations and routine stuff. You wouldn't have any time left over for that extra marketing and other things. Another opportunity that we have on the horizon, and it's not defined in any certain time frame, uh, but the community building caretaker is you had a short tenure left. And I could see an opportunity of combining the positions uh, where the person could be the caretaker and manager of the facility, and I could use the funds budgeted for both positions to make a, a more robust one. Can you see that a person that's doing like the pants job to want to go out and put the flag up and sweep the floors and outside and in the rain? I can't imagine. I mean, to me, there are two different types of jobs. Not that one person can't do the other one. Also, you know, well, it would be more akin to the pool manager's position of maintaining the janitorial and everything in the pool and at the same time as managing it. It becomes kind of a super jurisdiction. And yeah, it, it depends. I mean, if, if it didn't work out, we, we could separate them. Uh, but I think that's an opportunity to pool some funding to go in a direction to do that. now. To the extent that they are separate jobs, those separate jobs have defined time allocated for those jobs, and so maybe you don't actually get the other investment of time marketing. Planning. What, what plans does a gal have who's doing the job right now? There, what is what are her plans? Um, she's looking to purchase a home and move and retire. Oh, okay, All right. Prior to my ten plus years of being there, Leona was a skating manager and ran the office. And so Gail is the skating manager, and I thought, well, it would be nice she's working at North Bend Clinic now in Coquille. And so I didn't know if you'd even thought about asking Gail if she was interested in this job. At this point, I've heard that there is interest in this position by four or five people. And so regardless of who does it, we'd have to advertise and do a selection process. But before we do that, we need to define 
what the level of investment we want to make into this position and how important it is for the future health and you know vibrancy of the facility. Uh, I don't think the facility will grow or see a growth in reservations and use with 15 hours a week. I just don't think there's enough time to do the marketing on top of the existing maintenance and management of it. How many hours did you work in? I'm not supposed to speak to you directly, but... Well, I've been trying to do other tasks while I'm in the office, just mm -hmm. to be in the office more often. Um, I would say, you know, probably at least 40% of my time goes towards administrative things, just because there's a lot of people who just come in and just talk right. to you. Um, <laughs> I guess what I was thinking because I know that if she, you know you really helped, like Susan said, you helped you know Dennis with the river walk, you know a fantastic job, you know, and I know you've done you know you've done other things like that, which is and I understand you've helped help Kevin with the parks too, the master plan and that type of stuff. Now that wouldn't be something that this person would be doing. Not necessarily. Right. Okay. So. Well, that full time position winds up being yeah. 90, about ninety thousand dollars, maybe a hundred thousand. Good. Is that correct? 44% roll up on 50,000? Is it 44%? About 80,000, 80, 90,000? 80, okay. Is that right? Yeah. So do we have 80 or $90,000 for this endeavor? Chuck? We <laughs> 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 will transfer about $300,000 from the property management into the city's general fund. So, so what does that do for the property management? And the goal is there. Uh, the entire amount was a little over a million dollars, mm -hmm. and it was decided in the previous year workshop or meeting that we would send one third to the general fund, one third to the street fund, and retain one third in the property management fund to make improvements or sell or handle the properties we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it just ends up a third in each. So that would go from property to personnel. It would. It would go from. The general fund, which can be used to anything, yeah, to a specific. So basically, a third of that, a third of third, would go going to that. Okay, all right. Well, the first thing for me I have to see is a job description. because we're trying to shoot from here right now. Sure, I mean, this is why I brought it up in this forum for yeah. discussion. Perfect. So what do you need? Um, do you want to pursue this? Uh, it, I do see this as a bit of a business venture. It would be a trial basis to see, you know, if you put this much investment, what are you going to get out of it? Is it going to be able to build the program sufficiently to get more use out of the facility, more income, uh, you know, we could allocate some funding for the, the marketing aspects out of the promotions fund for that position to do a little more with on a more conservative basis. Uh, you know, we've, we've had Anne's con contributions for the last seven months, really, that she's gotten in there and, and been able to do things, and she's been successful in finding more support in the community for utilizing the building on a, on a broader basis. Uh, we're up to three days a week that we have intramurals, Tuesday, Thursday, or Sunday. And um, among that group, there have been a couple that have stepped forward to be responsible volunteers entrusted with the key to be able to open the facility and make use of it. And that's for the community. That's what you want to see a community building used for. Uh, but in terms of activities like uh, fundraisers that could be specifically for the building to get new curtains or drapes or floors, uh, refinishing the floor, resurfacing things, uh, putting art on the walls, history, historical photos, some of the things that uh, were mentioned in this evaluation uh, is going to take a more concerted effort. And my hope would be that this person could leverage existing opportunities, plan functions and events that would make it even more a community, a center of the community, people drawing people there or family game nights or movie nights or, or what have you, in addition to the skating and everything else that goes on there. 
that leagues. Um, we don't really have organized basketball leagues for adults. Um, and I've heard from people between the ages of 18 and 40 that they'd really like more to do in the community. And when the Central Mule and I uh, started, that got picked up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So someone that could maybe develop that into something more formal, where people are now paying a $30 fee, getting a jersey, having yeah, yeah. an organized basis for association and competition. Uh, it's that, that takes a lot more than what Han's been able to invest in it. And in, in some respects, it depends on where you want to go with the community's services. If you want to pursue a parks and recreation kind of a service, this position could definitely build a recreational component on our park system. Uh, could be horseshoe competitions and leagues and you know, using our existing assets, but in a way that hasn't been promoted. All right. Any other questions for Ben on this before we get a job description? And if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see in a job description, shoot it my way and I'll incorporate it. Thank you very much, Ben. Here's what got me tripped up on the urban renewal thing because they uh, there was a typo on the line that talked about our consent calendar for the urban renewal agency and so uh, that's what got me a little bit tripped up. Um, uh, proposal to construct a glass and aluminum shelter um, along the lines of a bus stop shelter for the pool deck. And also I know when Ben and I talked about this in the past we talked about the eligibility for you already dollars for this project also and so maybe that was in the back of my mind. But Ben? Yeah, uh, that was that. Uh, yeah. So. Um, Pacific Power had a grant for commu a community grant. Uh, we used that in the past to, to build the pool. They paid for the electrical systems and some aspects of that. And it's for uh, five or no, it's for ten thousand dollars, I believe. And um, I put in an application for that grant on the off chance that we might get it. But uh, with the thought of building a more permanent structure for the pool deck. And I should have gotten council approval for it, but because of deadlines, I went ahead and, and went for it. But uh, we could always turn it back if we did get it, and if the city didn't want it, right? Sure. So uh, the issue we've had since the pool's been open is uh, we have those pop-up awnings that have routinely been destroyed by the high winds that gust through that channel area between the buildings. and throw them over the fence and it creates a dangerous hazard in the area. Um, they get a lot of use as people seek shelter from the, the sun and elements. Um, and one of the solutions that I thought would look really nice would be a, a, one of those wide bus stop, bus stop shelters. And I started looking into it. I got a few quotes. And the first quote was a really nice shelter, but it was like $36,000. It was going to be uh, 30 feet long, so that it would encompass a larger area than those awnings. Those awnings are 10 by 10, and it would be like having three of them, but they'd only be seven feet deep. Um, and then the bus stop shelter would be enclosed on three sides with anodized glass, and uh, I had a few people in Rotary and in the community say, well, I could get a shed built for a fraction of that cost. And I said, yes, but you can't see through the walls of a shed and with a pool and children in swimsuits, I don't want any areas that cannot be seen from any angle. Um, the, the last quote I got back was for 15,000 uh, for a similar dimension, only it would be a, a flat top uh, shelter instead of a arched top, um, but that they could adjust the height to be high enough so that you could fit a propane uh, heater underneath, uh, and then my thought was that propane heater could at once provide comfort for the users in the early morning or late evening hours, uh, but that they would pay, there would be a little donation box for them to fill the propane bottles every time they went empty. And as generous as people are, that could be a good revenue offset for maintaining the comfort of the pool area by those who use it. And 
so all these ideas were, were swirling, and the idea that this could be affixed, bolted into the concrete, permanent shelter, it would look really nice. It would provide shelter from not only the sun, but the wind as well, uh, and a, a little heated space. Uh, this really isn't for the people in the pool, obviously. It's for the parents and grandparents that are huddled outside watching their children at 8 a.m. take swim lessons. And uh, it, it just enhanced the, the use and appeal of the pool. Would the roof have to be flat or could it be slanted uh, maybe to the... Well, it would, we would put it on an incline so that the water would run off to the back and there's plenty of drain area you know, on the deck. I think I'm a year of all of us, our parents, sat there on the bleachers every morning and watched our kids. I know, I used to just love to see my wife do that. <laughs> sure, I bet you did. Come on, I want to have my coffee, morning coffee. You started this conversation by saying you, you would like you put in an interest for a grant from PPL. Yes. So you haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything back from you. Uh, the, when, when we were looking at a $30,000 shelter, because that was the first quote I got, um, the idea was that if we did get the grant from BPNL and we could use uh, some of the proceeds from the fish signs that the pool has, has sponsored this year, that they could get a third from one, a third from the other, and uh, the idea would be to ask URA for a third. Uh, but that would all be predicated on the council's interest in the project. At fifteen thousand? Well, that was when it was at thirty thousand. Oh. At fifteen thousand, I think we could, you know, obviously reduce that. Yeah. The thing I, we're 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 taking on new stuff. And we've got all these old things we haven't finished yet. You know, we we've got to. Uh, we need to get the docks back in the water. We need to sell some of those lots. We need to finish the fish cleaning process. We got a gazebo. We got. Uh, uh, we need to clean up and sell or finish renovating Jefferson School. We got paving plans. I, I'd like to see what those are. Um, we got Henry Street. That I, did some people talk to you about Henry Street paving? Henry Street? No. Um, they I, asked me about it. There you go. Talked okay. about the very end of Henry Street. Well, the whole thing. Uh, North. I'm sorry. South Henry. Oh. Um, they, Dan, somebody? Yeah, he talked to me a little bit, but he was under the impression that... Uh, or the influence. The, well, <laughs> just, that I don't know. Just kidding, I know him very well. He was under the impression that the city would pay two-thirds of the cost. Of That's the right, That's what he told me. I said, I've never heard such a thing. No, I, you know, one-third, we could probably yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that just, uh, I just came up, you know. Um, uh, we are out there working on it. Um, South Third? South Henry has its issues, and one of them is that it's flat. The other one is that it's got springs on all of them. Yeah, the and, and so we're out there, what we're going to do is we're going to re-ditch it, because the ditches don't have to be flat, and we're going to put in some culverts so that we can have it cross. Yeah. yeah. And um, another thing that we're looking at doing this year is uh, we may we may try with some of our gravel roads <clears throat> to have a company come in who can go in and scarify them, blade them, clean out all the ditches, crown them right, mm -hmm. and then roll them, yeah. and, you know, soak them down and then roll them and well, see how This is something, this is a conversation we're going to have later on, but, but, but you're, you're, you're telling me exactly what I've got out on my list here are things we need to do that I would like to see get done. You know, things just exactly like that. Now, the concession stand, uh, south entrance to the city, we've got all these things we've talked about, and we can't hang our hand, hat on any of them. If I tell you the number on that, you're just... Well, no. You're going to say we're getting anything. You know, we've done nothing. <laughs> well, you know, we have a number of them that are in the works. Cause, uh, yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. It's exactly what I'm talking about. They're in the works, but until they're finished, they're just in the works. And this has been in the works. We're, we're cultivating our pipelines. So I don't run out. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to agree with him because I got really frustrated because it seems like we're kind of like, I don't know, kind of like with holding mode. You know, we've got all these changes and things happening, and I don't think things going forward, and it really frustrates me.
kind of what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, but I just see, I mean, our flowers are beautiful in town, yeah. you know, but thanks to the, you know, the garden club. But, you know, we have, I don't know, I'm just kind of frustrated with the town itself right now. And so I would like to see kind of like what Lauren says, some of these things that we, we want to get done, done, you know. And it doesn't seem like we have anybody leading the charge on these things either, so, oh, oh, you know. Yes, no, 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 no. I know where you are. Well, I can find you every time in the same spot. So what I'm saying is, is we need somebody out here that's beating on you. I don't need to be beaten. I've had enough of that. <laughs> that that's that's just a figure of speech. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Here's the thing. You know, I, first of all, the docks, if they're in by the end of next summer, Everyone needs to be happy. Okay, see, there's there's the if. Well, you know? but I we got the ifs on everything. But I can't yeah. control the Oregon State Marine Board. No, Marine I know Board. that. I know and, that. And until they're done. Yeah. yeah. And we're we're about to have our plans finished for. Just about. We're getting close. For South First yeah. Avenue, you know, and yeah. it's a big project. The engineers are behind it. On the list. I'm going to try my best to get the fish station done by the end of August. I'm going to try my best, but I did not make that deadline. Until we get something done, but I don't want to do anything else. That's me. Okay, I'm not arguing with you about it. I'm just saying, as a counselor, I want things done before we start new stuff. Okay. Okay. That's it. The concern I have now is that start of the summer that pool will shut down for at least. Two or three days, two different times. One for a heating problem and one for a pump. When they built that pump up, built our swimming building, they built it with the antenna put in its own private dedicated heater in there for the water system. And yet we're still running off that antiquated one in the community building that should have been replaced 10 years ago or more. more. Yeah. And we're spending money on other things that really. The kids can swim without that cover shell, but when that water drops down to 50 degrees, they're not going to be swimming. And we ought to be looking at getting the heating system for the pool straightened out. And the community building, too. You need to rip that Noah's Ark out of there and put in a modern battleship. Well, that's the kind of direction that I need. Because uh, you know, I, I discussed it with the pool manager, and we did talk about the heating system for the pool. But that would be ten times more costly and invisible to the public versus mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a cheap grant-induced kind of project that would be highly visible and immediately appreciated. Well, uh, I understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and so it's it's definitely council's pleasure. Maybe people need to understand, you know, explain things so that they understand about the boiler and about the money. Because the pool is costing us more money, you know. I mean, and I know we have the fish and it's wonderful and, we, and they're open more often and all that's great. But I'm very pleased about that. But it is costing us more money than it did last year. Sure. You know, we were supposed to be saving all this money, but it really isn't. You know, it's not saving us money. Is that because of the heat? Last year, we had other mechanical problems with the pool, with the CO2 tank, and uh, a number of other issues in June that were very costly, and uh, that just set us back last year. This year, we haven't had any extraordinary costs, and I haven't seen any financial report for June yet to say where we're at, but I know it, you can't really get a good, a good sense of where the pool's at because in June all of our income is front loaded and everyone's buying their season passes up front and you get the highest attendance in the pool in June and then it begins to taper off in July and August. So uh, you really have to look at the season as a whole to gauge how it balances out. And you know, if we don't have any more mechanical difficulties, we should have a really good year this year and be in that improved cash position, but uh, so far so good. I think the whole problem with the pool system and the revenue return is that you build a kiddie pool, which I understand why, and the kiddie pools, as soon as they get out of school, they're going for it, and then come June and July, you got fairs, you got camps, you got 
everything else. Kids go away, the revenue goes away. If they ever get the lap pool done where you can rely on the old retired citizens that go down there every day, you might break even. And, and because the pool is generating a deficit every year, we are able to put zero away for that lap pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's an option, and that's a council policy directive. Uh, I, I, you know, we're very fortunate to have that asset. How is that coming? That's going to be this summer. Uh, well, they don't cut in the summer because of the fire happened, <coughs> so it'll they'll resume again in late fall, late October, or November, and they'll be done by March, April. Uh, we already got. They, in order to get that extension to cut, they gave us half our payment in April, and they'll make another payment in December, and then they'll true up in April if we owe them because they pay too much. It'll just settle out at that point. All right, anything else on the uh, proposed shelter? Good to hear this kind of council input. All right. Um, Proposed changes for how the city addresses code violations that may improve and expedite the process for dealing with repeat offenders. Now, Mr. Urban. Well, the best thing I've read since I've been on the council. <laughs> Carry on, thank you. I just don't know yet if it's legal. No, I, I don't think I heard that. Exactly. I looked at the ORS, I didn't find anything. I looked through the OARs, I didn't find anything. But I'm not an attorney, so the attorney's going to have to make sure it seems awfully specific. That it's 10 days and it has to be done this way. But if it doesn't, and our code just called for it, I think that somebody where there's no one living there or they refuse to take care of their lawn. Uh, I, I know, you know, I'm talking with the, the, the police chief, their officers have other things to do besides write these 10 day sure. notices every time we need to go out and mow. And so if we can find a way to say, you know, if within the last 180 days, you've either had to been mowed or you've gotten your letter, then we can just go out there and mow it again when it gets to a certain mm -hmm. height where it's dangerous. Or, barring that, or maybe even adding to that, if the other chief says, this is a fire hazard, to take so care of it now. <laughs> Just said, no. Well, that'll take care of our derelict houses, too. Said, yes. What we need is a good parsonist here in town. Great. <clears throat> but 180 um, days. No, you, you keep mowing within that 180 days, oh, right? Okay. Gotcha. Right, yeah. So what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is, if we send this person a letter and they either don't respond or they're like, they foreclosed on me, I'm not going to come mow that thing, yeah. uh, then they've gotten their letter. So what we do is after the 10 days is up, we go out and we mow it. And then we send them a bill, and when they fail to pay the bill, we put a lien on the property. Well, what I would like to be able to do is if they've already gotten that letter and they already know, and we have to go back in a couple months because the grass is tall again, then we just, we just you know, the officer says, hey, it needs to be mowed. It's, we're, someone complains it needs to get mowed. So that we can just go mow it because we've already noticed them that they have a problem and they don't want to deal with it. Instead of having to write a new letter, send it by certified mail, <clears throat> wait 10 days to where the grass just keeps getting taller, they can just say, hey, you know, we drove by and we saw this house and it needs, it needs to be mowed and already sent them a thing, you know, three months ago when you guys mowed it, go get it. Is this a separate issue than the people that have a house that, that they're, they're gone and it's terrible and it needs to have something done to it and there's, you know, rats in it and, and, the, and the windows are gone and stuff? Is this a separate issue from the lawn being mowed? Or yes, it, it would be. Yeah, because the other takes a whole lot more doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I'm still following, you know, Medford about what they were looking at doing. Um, foreclosed houses is a real problem down there. And evidently there's some obscure law in Oregon that if they 
just foreclose on a house and they don't take care of it for X amount of time, the city can just take it. And say this is now our house and they can either tear it down or somebody build something new or they can sell it to somebody who wants to put up their stuff. And how did they get how did they, how did that work so they can do that? I don't know. They haven't got it implemented yet. Oh. I mean I I'm gonna call down there when, when I read that they've gotten that done. It's another thing I'm just in the work. if we get an answer on this ordinance thing by next So so I have a little bit of information. Okay. If I may. Sure. Um, yes, yeah, so there is in our current code um, uh, an expedited process. I didn't know based on the memo that we we're looking at whether or not um, somebody's been noticed to, if we need to notice them again, so I haven't looked into that. Um, Attorney Muntrath sent me a memo about um, apparently chapter 8.08.020 is our um, abatement, our summary abatement um, within the municipal code. So that's an option. We've also looked at some language that's a little bit more clear because that is kind of not, you know, not the most clear section of the code. So we've looked at an example. And this one is from Ashland. Oh, can you not hear me? No, I can. I, yeah, I can hear my really careful. Go ahead, you're doing. Oh, great. I'll slow down. Sorry. Um, so we're looking at some better language that the council might want to implement in that situation as well. And I'm happy to put together something and do a little bit more research on the. I guess repeat offenders, I guess you could Right, yeah. It. Yeah. Perfect. Can you have it next month? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, it's two weeks, it's quick, but I think we should be able to put something together. Okay. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Of course, we, if we're going to add to the code, change the code, you're going to have to do a public hearing. So More mowing for Mike. Be prepared. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Mike's got a lot to do. He's, he's a good man. And we, have to, never go we may anywhere. have to, uh, the <clears throat> person at the community building one along. There we go. All right. Uh, is there anything else uh, for the good of the order as far as the uh, work session is concerned? Yes, I'd like. Certainly. I would like to see sometime in the future that we have um, some kind of like a meeting with the city, you know, probably to explain the things like, for instance, your codes, you know, and so that so that we know, you know, that, I mean, the person down the street knows what it takes to, you know, to abate a house, what it takes when you, your neighbor has rats coming out of it, and you, and you say, what do I do? And they go, well, tell the police, you know, or well, I don't want, you know, I mean, that type of stuff. Also, just what you're saying, as far as the mowing, the mowing, I'd also like to see sometime we get together, I mean, the city, and talk about the streets. I know I talked to Kevin several times, and I totally understand what you're saying. But uh, there's this, I've had people come up to me about a street, and I talk to Kevin, and they go, "Well, it's water underneath it, and so because of the way they build it up, you know, it's going to keep going, and all this kind of thing." Well, that's good to know, and I think the public needs to know that why some of these streets are not doing as well. And for instance, uh, South First Avenue, you know, oh my gosh, to fix that, it's exorbitant. People don't understand that. Well, we're yeah. trying to get the cost down. Oh, I don't mean so much that, but I think the people need to understand why the streets cost so much, why we don't have, I mean, since, like you're saying, there's water and you know, and it build up, so it's going to keep going down with gravel. The average person doesn't know that. You know, why? I mean, they just get frustrated because the streets have, you know, you, you keep having potholes or you keep having this and that. I think it'd be nice to, you know, to know why things cost so much and why things take, you know. Or that things cost so much. Yeah, that's I'm, fine. I'm not sure that most people are aware that every foot of street, and I mean, you're talking two lane with sidewalk, one side mm -hmm. is between $200 and $300 a foot. Okay, so that's, that's, that's not cheap for no. a rebuild. So what I hear you saying, Counselor, is that you'd like to have some kind of community education program, yes. whether it's a, an open house, a town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen citizen academies work well to introduce people to every department in the city and ask questions. But that tends to be a multi-day, multi-night, week commitment, uh, and that usually reduces the size to just a handful of people. But um, maybe people wouldn't be quite so frustrated if they understood, or you know, if they would come to it and find out, and don't think the public. Well, you need another way to get the word out because they will not come to the meetings. You know. Oh, I, oh, I know that. I didn't you know. hear. Yeah. But I mean, something. So, yeah. You know. But you know, like a manifesto, publish it. <laughs> Or something to let them know. We, we send the consumer confidence report.
report out every year. We have every address with labels. If we wanted to make a four-page information. That's not a bad send idea. It out. It's really not all that expensive. It's not. But people aren't going to read it. I'm sorry. I mean, people like, I mean, well, I'm sure there's a certain amount of people that well, read it. But, it, it uh, okay, you know, it's the old, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink unless you have a hose and a bunch of duct tape, and, and then it's really ugly. So, why, if those people want to stay uninformed, then you're, you're not going to be able to inform them unless you get a loudspeaker on a truck and start driving around town. And so you're, what you're really feeling is instead of having what you know, Ben's talking about, that you go ahead and send some information to the people and explain it that way. That's what you're I saying. Would, I would bet as far as, as staff time, the things you're going to have to do to bring them there, like, you know, okay. whenever we had an open house, we have refreshments and things like that. By the time you do all this and you set all that stuff up, every you know, I know I can write fairly well, and I know all the other department heads can as well. And we just put together our own little thing, not a not just the projects that are going on, but hey, this is why this, or this is why this, and and city council could say, hey, you need to let people know about this because you were talking about roads. I mean, it might not be something that I would put in there, but if somebody said you should put that in there, then then I, then I would. I would expand one more step on what you're saying is that this, whatever you're going to call it, public announcement, what is from the Public Works Department, and it's about streets, period. So once The next one is about the ambulance, the next one is about the police cars, and the next one is about the new library, and the next one is about whatever. So one Absolutely. But then you're talking about a separate mailing for each of them. Well, yeah, but I mean like every, other, you know, two or three months, you mm -hmm. know, just to keep, just to keep that baby going. I because just, now you're... I know you don't let people talk, but I, I sell 2,000 newspapers every week, and I have sent you people questions. You have the ability to write in and have that printed. What are you talking about sending stuff out? 2,000 people read the paper every single week. Come on. The reason there, people feel disenfranchised from you because you have never even answered the questions that they do ask, like the whistle or the, so anyway, bring it on. Well, I Send felt the same the way newspaper. about the Sentinel, so uh, you I, we're kind of even on this thing. Yeah, you cancel my Sentinel. You cancel her out of your paper. And so why do I want your paper if you're going to cancel her out? I, well, do you want to get into that? I canceled her out because no, 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 she no, gossiped about problem. my no. business downtown. But I'm telling okay, you, I'm offering this. If you want to put it in a sentinel. Yeah, yeah if you're going to do it, that would, that would be a great idea. I sell 2,000 a week. Yeah. You can reach that many people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, it sounds like if there wants to be discussion more on this and the cost of actually doing a quarterly uh, uh, infogram, I'm if sure. If you want me to do that, I will happily write uh, a, a piece and send it to Gene. Perfect. You know, I, I think we got a lot of traction with the, about 18 months ago when, when we did the strategic planning focus groups. Mm -hmm. And then we had the town hall meeting. Okay. There were very few people other than those that participated in those focus mm -hmm. groups that showed up to the town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. But those that were energized were really excited because we gave them something to sink their teeth into on how the streets are funded and budgeted. And they all came out with eyes and big saucers because they realized, oh, there just isn't the funding yeah, right, that right. we're out there was. And, yeah. and that was personal invitations, direct phone calls, and an enormous amount of investment of staff time and effort just to educate those 50. And no one else expressed an interest, no one else showed up. Um, you know, I, I think, yeah, if, if the paper would carry stories and help get that word out, that would be great. Um, I think a lot of other cities are doing a lot to try to get more public involvement and interest. Uh, some are doing YouTube videos and little one minute snap shots of different aspects of the budget. It's a huge problem you know, that 
people are just generally disinterested in their local government. No, that's true. They, they yeah, complain true. about it, yeah. talk about it, or give opinions that are not based on information or fact. Do you know how many, well, do you have much activity on the Facebook site? You know, we're up to 800 or so likes on Facebook with the city, and you know, if I post something on the Facebook page, it doesn't go out to all 800. Well, I hardly ever get anything. Facebook has algorithms where it only sends it to some, well, you hardly ever get anything because I hardly ever post. Oh, okay. It's not something I use on a regular basis. Uh, but when, you know, I, I posted on it a couple of times ahead of gay 90s, ahead of the emergency preparedness fair, uh, things like that. So it's more intermittent and with, you know, yeah, I I, I'm not big into Facebook, but uh, I, I, it's a tool. Um, but if I, I have paid to boost posts, and then it'll send it up, send it out to a few hundred more than what the normal algorithm does, and that's been helpful. It only costs like 10 bucks to get that extra boost. I think it only charged us six dollars, but I don't know. I'm, I've never been a diehard social media person, and so I use it on a limited basis. I know that, um, my wife has told me that if I used it every day and made multiple posts a day, I could build a much bigger following and, uh, and use it to a greater effect. Uh, maybe that's something someone at the community center marketing the community can do. Well, I'm going to do that continually all the it, time. It, it, putting the city yeah. news on the gossip. To me, that's nothing but a gossip sheet. And yeah. I just think that the city news needs to be, we need to have our regular city council meetings, and if a holiday comes, then we can have it the next day. But you know, look at this. If we have regular city council meetings, we, have, we can have a meeting the next day. We have night. between 50 and 100 people who look at these recordings we make. Okay, yeah. uh, I just would like to comment that using YouTube and social media reaches a different segment of population. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to reach a more young crowd, so like people under the age of 40, for example, then you would want to use Facebook or YouTube because that is how they access information. That's right. So yeah. it's really depending on who you're trying to talk to is you have to choose which mechanism of communication you want to, you want to use. What kind of gifts do we, we get on our, our, our uh, web page? we get anything there at all? I'm sorry, I, I have never set up the tracking. Oh, that. okay. Uh, you have to get a different app and put on there, and I've just not done that. We were going to do that, weren't we? We were. <laughs> put that on my list, buddy. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're on Lord's list. Hey, Lauren, do you want to run through that list again? I'm <laughs> making notes. I'll give it to you. How's that? <laughs> it's not so lonely now. No, it's not so lonely. <laughs> I, I thought a lot of them. But, and if you want, uh, I was just thinking for our for my next report for the council, the head of the next council meeting, I'll include an update on every one of them so you know exactly where it's at and why. Perfect. Perfect. Very good. And is there anything else for the good of the order? I don't make one. Uh, when we were talking earlier about the, what the full benefits package of this person would be, if it's a $45,000 position, it come out to be about 70, not 80 or 90. Oh, 70? Yeah. Okay. And the second thing is, we do send out a water bill each month, and we've discussed, we send them on postcards now, and we've discussed moving to a full sheet format, and they have a, full, a printer that actually when it prints, it folds it on itself. So you couldn't really add to that particular one um, a blurb from Public Works this month that we're already paying the mail out. But there may be something else that I can look at. If we're already paying the mail, it costs a cost of thousand dollars a month to mail to mail it. Yeah. You know, if you had on, on something like that, down at the bottom, if you had, did you know? Did you know that one foot of pavement costs two hundred fifty dollars? You know, I think mean, now everybody knows it, or no, no, eighteen hundred people know it. I should say. Yeah. Well, currently we have, I think, one line that we can use. 
Yeah. The way exactly. software is formatted. Yeah. And we might be able to pay them to do a custom. If yeah. Could, we went to a full sheet. Yeah. We're making the top two thirds of the people available. Uh huh. That yeah. I'll, I'll check for that. Okay. Do that. Newspaper. For Kevin. You mentioned one other thing, which was the new gazebo. Yeah. And I don't know. It's been a while since we've kind of talked, and I don't know. No, we talked about that at the last council meeting. Did 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 I tell you that it, we're ordering? No, they couldn't ship it past what was in Kansas. Yeah, but now they can. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, I swear, I got an email from from Brandy Olmsted that asked me a couple questions. She does that sometimes, and one of them said, "What was the name of that company? You know, and that you were going to get this from?" And I said, well, it's moot, you know, we can't really get it. I said, but here it is. And so when I, I clicked on the link, and it came up, and it's like, now delivering to all 48 states. You're suspect, buddy. You're a suspect. You know what? <laughs> I'll tell you this, and I wish I had a recording of it. I am the witness, I, them I on went the, in and said, what? <laughs> I called them on the phone, and I said, you know, I want to order this, and they go, well, where are you? And I said, well, there's my zip code, I'm in Oregon. And she's like, we don't ship to Oregon. And I was like, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I just clicked a button that's an extra 750 bucks to ship to Oregon. And she's like, oh, okay, uh, you're right. <laughs> so it's uh, it's on its way. And I think unless the guys are have some downtime and they're not doing anything, I'll probably just hire a contract that you can take for yeah. a day or two. Wonderful. There you go. So I'd let you know that a concerned citizen actually, you know, had me go to that page again and was like, oh, I can Hey. And so you still, I'm now, um, now, now Councilor Chappelle whispered in my ear because his enthusiasm, I didn't know it was much of an angular, but uh, his enthusiasm about the uh, fish cutting station is uh, apparently overwhelming as well. Uh, I know we're dealing, we're looking at the uh, guys are extremely busy. What's your gut telling you? Are we going to be able to get her done? By the end of August or by yeah. the end of summer? They're by the end the of same. One or the other. Um, I think so. It's going to be dependent on uh, the guys who are doing this, the um, stainless steel work. Because we went out and took a look at it. And here's the thing. I, I, when I, I'm sorry to take up more time, but when we went and looked at our solar stuff and our solar panels, it turns out that we only need a two panel array. And the way the guy quoted it to me was on a pole. And I'm like, well, look, I already told you we're going to be rebuilding the building so that, you know, the, it's north or it's east and west instead of north and south. Well, when I went and looked at the station, the bones of it, are good. I mean, it's got a terrible roof, uh, needs new fixtures, needs the lights, needs the fan, needs the ADA accessibility and all this. But if we're putting that, we can put that up on a pole instead of having to put it on the roof. Not only can we shift it from like summertime to wintertime, we don't have to reorient the station at all. We just need to refurbish what's there. And so, we are going to be able to leave a lot of what is already existing and just add to what we have. On your so, staff, you have a guy that does carpenter work. Yes, but he's our temporary guy. I've got another guy who does some carpentry work, but my temp guy is very, very good at it. He built his own small home. He did all the solar for it, so he'll be able to do all the solar work on So what is he doing right now? Helping Mike Mo. <laughs> He's kind of Mike's assistant from from okay. April till as long as I can keep him. Yeah. He's not the Jefferson. He's not Jefferson. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen. I've seen. Kevin. Kevin. He's David a good guy. He's a real good guy. Do you have an estimate on how much those savings would be no. on the fish? Because uh, it, it it almost completely it, it changed the scope. I know I'll still be able to come in under. Know okay. what it was before because I don't have to go out and, and do a lot of stuff. But more more than anything, it's going to save on labor. For the so what day are we shooting for? <laughs> well, I'm shooting for the end of August. I'm writing it down. 
Yeah, you can write it down. You, you know, I'm, but I'm shooting for it. I'm not promising it. I know I try not to promise problem. things to people that I don't know that I can absolutely do. <laughs> All right. Can I have Certainly. Thank you. Yeah, we're angling for the end of all. Oh. 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 Gosh. <laughs> Sorry, she, she did it. Dave, you were going to look into the, if there's any way that the whistle could be lowered or something, remember, because we were saying it was too loud and that was part of the problem. We were going to look and see if there's some other way that it could be. Right. Did you have to have it? I haven't found any avenues yet okay. for anyone that would be willing to, to take that on to see. Talking about the whistle? The whistle, whistle yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, I think it's pretty much you. Who? Boy, out of the solicitors told us we have an ordinance that says we can't have Air actuated whistles inside the city. Yeah. Well, we were going to see if maybe there was some other way that we could do something to have it not quite so loud. I, I, I think that I think that we actually already already actually went over that issue about towing it down in there. It, if we did, if we got it down so low, it would just be like pushing it just a bunch of air out there. Am I right? So and are you going to get the whistle back up and running if someone wants to pick it up and move it outside the city limits? Yeah. I'm yeah. not right. asking whether it can be lowered at all. I'm asking. I'm not saying how many times a day or where. I'm just asking if it could be lowered. So it's a moot point on muting the whistle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ooh. Moot. Yeah. 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 Thank you for asking, Councilor yeah. Short. Uh, anything else? Because yeah. this is a work session. Where are we on the fish plane? I already went over that, friend. I just talked about that. Okay, but when's it going to be finished? <laughs> Maybe the end of August. He's angling We're for the angling end. for the end of August. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep you on the boat too, buddy. So. <laughs> All right. Anything else for the good of the order? Yeah. Hearing none, then we're adjourned at seven twelve p.m. <laughs>